But for me, the best was yet to come. I climbed into a log canoe and was paddled around the Kerala backwater canals. directly past people's back gardens, past all these local people, and they're washing their pots in the uh, side of the canal. Some of the women are washing their hair, washing their clothes. Some are dipping their heads just under the surface of the water. And some other people are getting right down into the water and submersing themselves fully. And this is um, just an amazing place. It's amazing. This is the feeling of tranquility is incredible. So peaceful. All the people are so friendly, really smiling. If you wave to just anybody, they give you this beautiful, big, big, wide smile back. The next day I walked around Fort Cochin, the old Portuguese area of Cochin. Many foreigners to India aren't aware that India has a passion for antiques and artifacts. We're in a um, Mountain Cherry and there's loads of these really lovely little uh, antique shops. Just imagine, we're just trying to figure out how to get stuff home. Just imagine having something like that and going through customs for that. Oh hello, I'm just going back to Great Britain with a spoon on my shoulder. I'm going to go home and make myself a little cup of soup. Jewish people first settled in Matt and Cherry in Fort Cochin in AD 52 and have left a legacy of extraordinary antique shops in Fort Cochin's Jew Street. These fascinating shops reminded me of being in a famous explorer's study, like Indiana Jones for example. There were old compasses, telescopes, ship sextants. If I wanted to, I could even ship back home a Chinese pagoda, a winding staircase and have my own private canoe for a jungle, which I don't have. We, I've just bought a kurta. And I bought a kurta and some white trousers as well to go underneath. And now this lovely little man from, uh, where are we again? What's the name of the place? We're in Tebla. Matt and Cherry. M Matt and Cherry? Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. This, this lovely little man is uh, <laughs> making me look like a Carolyn Prince. <laughs> with a face like a lobster. <laughs> I feel like I want to be on a camel in the desert. <laughs> I was totally mesmerised by the little worlds within each shop and got lost walking around the narrow lanes of Jew Street. And by pure chance, I walked into the last day of the Hindu festival. The festival is to offer thanks to the gods for a good season for their crops in Kerala. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm very, very, very excited because it's the first time we've got really close to an elephant. Elephants play a major role in the daily life and festivals of the people of Kerala who have a uniquely close and affectionate relationship with elephants. In Kerala, the Asian elephant is mostly used for heavy draft work such as in timber mills, pulling heavy objects in safaris, though they are widely used in temple rituals throughout the year. For occasions such as this Hindu festival today, the elephants are splendidly caparisoned with ornaments of gold. The wealthier temples even have their own elephants. The Asian elephants of India are not as tall as the African elephant and have smaller ears. At first glance I began to think the chaining of an elephant's hind and front legs appeared a little cruel. However, an elephant mahout, that is the trainer and owner, explained to me it is a safety measure. Must is an annual high rise in reproductive hormones in the male elephant which mostly occurs in the cold season around December and January. Musk is a very dangerous period for handling a male elephant for during this period of musk even the most placid of elephants can become highly violent towards humans and property. There are strict laws actually that mahouts must adhere to when using leg chains and the chains are removed as soon as the elephant has finished his musk period. I fly from Kerala to the former Portuguese state of Goa and the rolling waves of the Arabian Sea on its west coast. I was 